when I was an adolescent, I, I think in reality, I was struggling with some level of depression. I didn't feel good about myself. I basically functioned in the world from a place of feeling less than the people around me. I didn't grow up in a family that valued education very highly. And so I was not very focused on my academics. I wasn't a good student. I didn't get good grades. I didn't feel very capable at anything, to be completely honest. And I mostly led my life around the idea of waiting for someone to choose me and give me a sense of mattering. And um, very fortunately, that didn't happen. <laughs> uh, because what it pressured me to do is I, I in my sort of mid to late adolescence, really started to focus on how can I feel good about who I am and how can I develop into a person that I respect. And I did a couple of things uh, that I think were very important to forging a strong sense of self. One is that I really believed in, I had faith in the idea that God loved me, even though I couldn't fully feel it. I knew it more logically than I felt it internally, but I believed it was true. And so during that period, I really um, was in pursuit in my relationship with God with a sense of mattering and a sense of potential or permission. The other thing I was doing during that time was I was crafting a picture of the kind of person that I wanted to become, the woman that I wanted to, be, to develop into. And it felt very different than who I believed I was at the time. I was relatively shy. I felt so socially awkward. And I created a picture that was about a person that was um, comfortable in her own skin, was kind to other people, who was willing to work hard, a person who was willing to do hard things to create skills, to create capacity in herself. And so I really drew up this picture and I would really pray asking God, like, is it, do you believe in me in a sense? Can I do this? Can I create this in my life? And sometimes those feelings would come, often they wouldn't, the feelings of reassurance or the sense that God loved me. But it came enough that I knew it was true and that I could lean into that feeling and really push myself towards a different view of myself than the one I currently had. And I'm very grateful to my younger self for the courage and the hard work that that took. It meant that I did things that were far outside of my comfort zone often and tolerated the discomfort, sometimes the feelings of humiliation <laughs> that would come with doing things that were outside of what I could really do. But more important than me being successful was the way that my behavior underscored in myself that I was worthy of those efforts, that I deserved be stretching myself and I deserved to fail, that it was okay to be imperfect at it and that my development was more important than doing everything perfectly or um, in ways that other people would validate. And so I'm grateful to that because you know, I persisted in it. It wasn't just something I focused on for a couple of months. I focused on it over years of time. And it pushed me to start really becoming a good student, to start pursuing and developing gifts that I started to discover were in me, and to create them into real capacities, and to really fulfill the measure of my creation, in a sense, through that creative pursuit of my own development as a person. And that allows you not only to be a force for good in the world because you've developed those gifts, but it also allows you to just be at peace with yourself, not because you're perfect or better than, just because you haven't lived your life in fear and you've developed real abilities that you can use in the world to live a good life and to bless the lives of others.